Miss Saigon Radio, take three. The hour is at hand to experience the epic masterwork that has become the classic love story of our time. The musical that has taken the world by storm, Miss Saigon. The heat is on in Saigon. The girls are hotter than A spectacle of rare achievement. The New York Times hails Miss Saigon gripping entertainment. She has a child. You have a son. From the creators of Les Miserables, encountered the heart-wrenching saga of passion, destiny, and the power of love. Miss Saigon. Miss Saigon. Voila! On stage hall, welcome to Dreamland. Its message is timely. Its story, timeless. Miss Saigon, the musical phenomenon that has redefined a genre while riveting an entire generation. Inspired by the searing tragedy of Puccini's Madame Butterfly, Miss Saigon sets that classic tale amidst the turmoil and anguish of the Vietnam War, creating an unforgettable tapestry of passion, pain, love, and loss. The winner of numerous theater awards, Miss Saigon is the sixth longest running show in Broadway history. It is played in more than 15 countries to more than 30 million people worldwide. Now embark upon the journey to an all new production of Miss Saigon. Meet its creators and cast backstage and on, front and center. We're on the road to Miss Saigon. People no longer think that to see a great show, you have to come to New York. Um, often, it is the New York production that has to match the quality of the touring. idea to update the work by Puccini, Madame Butterfly, what was an idea I had for a long time. And that's something we already discussed together. I mean, having an updated version of Madame Butterfly in the present day. Uh, at the end of uh, 86, I saw in a magazine a, that picture of a woman uh, being separated from a daughter at Saigon Airport because the daughter was flying to the USA to join the, her ex-GI father that the mother had been finding after many years of search, knowing that the day she find the father, it would be the last day for her with a daughter because the woman was not allowed to leave the country, but the daughter, yes, because she was American. And suddenly I did the connection between the sacrifice of this mother for the future of the child and the one undergone by Madame Butterfly in the opera work. I always had a dream in my head that one day we would put a beauty contest on stage. So when we were trying to find out how we would start the story, suddenly we realized that at that time in Saigon, you know, there was all these sleazy nightclubs and that some of them were holding beauty contests of the ugliest sort. <laughs> and that's how Miss Saigon was born. I'll give my life for you. This is a very different production of Miss Saigon than the ones that we have seen before, which were more or less reproductions of the original production in, of London. With this version, there, it, it won't be ambiguous who are presenting the soul of, of the show. And I'm sure that going in a small city in proportion of what the uh, United States is, starting in Daytona, that kind of city was a show never went before. 
it would be very interesting to see how far is the audience of Deep America touch and move by the show, and I'm very confident that it's going to work very well. And the first dance group going in is going to be all men, and the second group will be all the women, the girls we didn't get to see this morning, and the girls that I called. I'll come back and get you in a couple minutes. I'm just trying to get some food in these guys. Casting Miss Saigon was extremely challenging on many different levels. Working with the talent pool in New York, which I know, um, it's Miss Saigon, first of all, is not your standard musical theater. One, two, three, four, five, six, step seven, turn eight. It's not like doing Guys and Dolls or Music Man or Oklahoma or anything that's pretty all American traditional. One, two, three, four, five, six, Um, Saigon requires not only rock and roll vocal chops, it's sung through, it's truly an opera, um, and because of the interracial casting. I mean, half of your cast has to be Asian because they're playing, you know, the citizens in, of Vietnam. So that posed all, a lot of different problems. I did a lot of research, I worked with the director, I did an actual lot of historical research, you know, because the, the Mitchell, the director, had hundreds of books and lots and lots of videotape of what the actual Vietnam experience was about. So you sort of carry that into the audition process because that's one of the hardest parts as a casting director, as a casting person, is understanding what the director needs and wants. There's a real basic intuition that you have to have. Talent, you know talent right away. My eye automatically goes to the best dancer in the room. Part of it's understanding the craft and what they have to go through to get to where they are, and there's different levels of it. There's some raw talent in Miss Saigon, absolutely raw. You know, Emma Rita Alcid, she's 19 years old, you know, right out of Jersey. And I could not take my eyes off of her. Every time she was in a room, like if I walk in a room and there were 30 girls in there, she would always catch my eye. And then it was so great when she would come into the callback situation, or she'd come into a dance call, or she'd come taking the next step, you know, those steps that you get to. You know, it takes, sometimes it takes five, six, seven auditions before you get to the hiring point. On the road to Miss Saigon, we'll return in a moment.